Well, hello everybody one last time. This is the last of the videos that we'll have for Notes in Advanced Algebra, and you will have your last quiz coming up this week. It's kind of weird to think that it was just two months ago that we were at the state basketball tournament, and at that point there were just a few vague rumors about what might be happening. That Friday, of course, they ended up playing the championship in an almost empty arena, and after that, we never came back to school. So it's been a really weird spring, but hopefully you guys have gotten some good stuff out of it. For the past few weeks, we've been learning about conic sections. And of course, conic sections were just shapes that you could slice from a cone. And so far, we've talked about a number of those conic sections. The four conic sections were circles, parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas. We mostly learned about parabolas earlier in the year, and this spring we learned that circles were all the points that were the same distance from a fixed point. We learned that ellipses, the sum of the distances to two points, was always the same, and today we're going to find out just what's up with hyperbolas. The quiz that you'll have this week is mostly about hyperbolas, but there will be a couple of questions that go into the applications of conic sections. And so I want to talk just a little bit about those today as well. Last week we learned about the reflections of ellipses and the fact that if you take something like a pool ball and you shoot it through one focus of an ellipse, it always reflects back to the other focus of an ellipse. Another application of ellipses is that's the shape of the orbits of all the planets and of everything else in the universe. Something we didn't really mention before, but I do want to mention to you today, is what some of the applications of parabolas are. When you have parabolas, what happens is that things that go through or start at the focus of a parabola always end up reflected straight out parallel to each other. One of the biggest applications of a parabola is car headlights. The whole idea of your headlights is you want to light the road right in front of you, and that's why the shape of the mirror that's behind your headlight is a parabola, a three-dimensional parabola, but it takes the light that's at the light bulb, which is the focus of the parabola, and it reflects it straight out ahead so that you can see what's on the road. Another thing that happens to be shaped like a parabola is a satellite dish. In this case, what happens is rays come in from the satellites parallel to each other, and the dish reflects them so that they end up at one little focus that then can be hooked up straight to your TV. And again, I do want you to know a little bit about the applications of parabolas and ellipses, but what we're mostly going to talk about this week are hyperbolas. And Hyperbolas, when you look at them, they kind of look like two parabolas that are sort of back-to-back. -back. What it really is is two halves of the same shape. You get a hyperbola by taking what we think of as a normal cone and then a copy of it that's upside down, and you slice straight up and down so that you go through both parts of that cone. The official definition of a hyperbola is all the points in a plane where the difference in the distances to two fixed points is constant. If you look at that definition, it's almost identical to what we did last week for an ellipse. An ellipse was all the points where the sum of the distances to two fixed points is constant. For a hyperbola, it says difference. The only difference between those two words is that sum means you add and difference means you subtract. And here you take the two foci, you keep subtracting how far it is between those two points, and what's always going to happen is you get the same answer. Now because of that, when we do equations for hyperbolas, which is of course the main thing that you're going to be doing this week, you'll notice there's a minus in the middle of it. 
When I get to the standard version in a second, it's going to be just a little bit more complicated than what you're seeing here. But the main difference between ellipse and hyperbola is everything works the same, but there's minus in the middle. Now in this picture, you'll see something else in there. It also shows you a couple of dashed lines, and those lines are what we call asymptotes. An asymptote is just a line that a graph approaches, but it's never going to actually touch. As you get further and further out, the graph's going to get closer and closer and closer to that line, but it never crosses it. And what this does is it shows you where that hyperbola is going to end up going, how flat or how wide it's going to end up being, as you keep on going forever. Again, an asymptote is just a line that you approach, but you never actually touch. And it turns out that those asymptotes are really the thing that makes hyperbolas different from parabolas. Here's a picture that shows you a couple of different hyperbolas. And they're similar to each other in that they both open up to the left and right. They're both what we would call horizontal hyperbolas. But the difference is how steep those asymptotes are. That makes a difference in how the overall graph works. I mentioned the applications of ellipses and parabolas. Hyperbolas also have some important applications. One thing that is really useful in hyperbolas is they will give you the greatest possible strength for the least possible material if you're constructing things. And I'll show you some examples of that in a minute. Hyperbolas also tend to scatter waves over large areas. And here's some pictures that show you both of those things. Something that is a classic hyperbola shape is the cooling towers at like a power plant. The reason that cooling towers have that shape is that they can be made very cheaply with very little material, but at the same time be strong enough to withstand hurricane force winds so you don't have issues with them collapsing. Another thing that's shaped like part of a hyperbola are the acoustic shells that we'll put behind the band or choir for performances. The goal of those acoustic shells is to scatter the sound throughout the entire gym, so it isn't just one small area that can hear, it's everybody. Here's a bunch of other pictures that are just showing you different things that are hyperbolically shaped. You can see a tree down at the bottom left, and trees do tend to form a hyperbola shape on their trunk, especially as they get very old and because of that very heavy. That's because, again, what happens is it'll take that weight and spread it out over a bigger area at the bottom, which makes it much more stable than if it just went straight up and down. And there's a lot of other things you can see that are hyperbolic too, but again, the two big applications are they can support a lot of weight, and they spread rays over a wide area. There's actually a couple of versions for the standard equation of a hyperbola. First one here, it says x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And again, if you look at that, it's kind of like the exact opposite of what we did last week with ellipses. The only real difference between this and the equation of an ellipse is it says minus in the middle instead of plus. Now, this particular equation would be for a hyperbola that looks like the one that's in the picture. We have a hyperbola here that opens horizontally or across. And I can tell that because in the equation, x comes first. Here's another version for the equation of a hyperbola. This time it says y minus k squared over b squared minus x minus h squared over a squared equals 1. The difference between this one and the last one is this time y comes first. And when y comes first, you're going to have what we call a vertical hyperbola. You've got one that opens up and down. 
couple of the questions that you're going to have on your quiz just ask you whether certain equations will give you a horizontal or a vertical hyperbola. And again, all you do to tell that is you just look at the equation, does x come first or does y come first? If x is first, it's horizontal. If y is first, it's vertical. You can probably figure out an awful lot of the stuff that comes up in that equation just thinking back to what we did with ellipses. HK, which is just the opposites of those numbers that are on top of the fraction, that's always going to give you the center. If x comes first, it goes across. If y comes first, it goes up and down. And the vertices, the places where the hyperbola turns the corner, what you do is you look at the bottom of those fractions, and the a and the b are basically telling you how far away those things are. If you put those two numbers together, you can always find the slope of the asymptotes by taking b over a, or negative b over a. b is always the square root of that number that's on the y side, and a is always the square root of the number on the x side. And we're going to look at some examples and show you how all of that fits together. So here's a typical equation of a hyperbola. We've got x minus 2 squared over 36 minus y minus 1 squared over 4 equals 1. And both here and when you get to your quiz, you're going to be shown a couple of equations, and pretty much I'll ask you all of the things you might need to know about that. Most years, what we'll actually do is make graphs of hyperbolas, but that's kind of hard to do electronically, and that's why we're just going to talk about what each of the numbers that comes up in this actually means. So the things we're going to want you to figure out with an equation like this is where is the center? Does it open horizontally or vertically? How far is it from the center to the vertices? And what's the slope of the asymptotes? Now, you could probably have a series of questions on the quiz where you got four questions and I ask you those four things. So that's one of the things we want to talk about today. The center, again, is always the opposite of the numbers in parentheses. So here, the center is going to be at the point 2, 1. You go over 2 and up 1. That's where the center of this hyperbola is. I also know this one's going to open horizontally because x comes first in the equation. To answer that question, how far is it from the center to the vertices, basically I just look at the first fraction, I go down to the bottom, and I realize that's going to be a squared. I need to figure out what's just a, so I do the square root of 36, and I figure out I'm going to have to go 6 to the left and 6 to the right. That'll get me to the vertices. And again, the slope of the asymptotes is negative b over a. So here, I do the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 36 is 6. I'm going to get 2 sixths, or if you wanted to, you could reduce that to 1 third. I'd honestly probably just write plus or minus 2 sixths. Again, most years when we do this in class, I'll actually have people graph these hyperbolas. This is just a picture that's showing you what the graph would look like, so you can kind of see how it all fits together. Again, we figured out that the center is going to be at the point 2, 1. And then from that point, I go over 6 and back 6, which is why the vertices are at 8, 1, and then negative 4, 1. And I, we figured out that the slope of the asymptotes is going to end up being 2, 6. So if you look at it from the center, they counted up 2 and over 6. That's where that diagonal line is coming from. Then down 2 and back 6. And what we end up with here is sort of an x that we're fitting the whole hyperbola between. So again, you want to be able to look at that equation, figure out where's the center, how far do you go to get to the vertices, and does it go across or up and down? Here's another equation. We've got y plus 1 squared over 16 minus x minus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. 
couple of things that are different about this equation. One of them, and it's really the most important, is y comes first. And this time we've actually got the same number on the bottom of both fractions. The questions are exactly the same. I want to know where's the center? Does it open horizontally or vertically? How far from the center to the vertices? And what's the slope of the asymptotes? Again, y plus 1 squared over 16 minus x minus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. The thing people are most likely to screw up on this is the center. And the center is actually written correctly here. It's the point 2, negative 1. The thing that's important is remember that when you write out a point, x always comes first and y always comes second. That's why I've got the number that was in the parentheses by x first and the one by y second. And again, it is always the opposites of those numbers. So it is going to be the point 2, negative 1, and that's going to be my center. This time, because y came first, it's going to be a hyperbola that opens vertically. It's going to be like a u at the top and an upside down u at the bottom. The other two questions are comparatively easy. Again, to figure out how far from the center to the vertices, I just look at the first fraction. Square root of 16 is 4, so I'd have to go up 4 and down 4. And for the asymptotes, what we're going to end up doing is taking 4 over 4, or 1. So this time we're going to kind of do the same thing backwards. I've got a picture of the graph of a hyperbola here, and what we're supposed to do is figure out what's the equation. So what you want to do is look at that, think about where's the center, is it opening up or down, and how far are we going in each direction. I'll give you a minute to look through that, and then we'll compare and see what you came up with. So everything we need to know is right here. I can tell first off that this is a vertical hyperbola. It opens up and down. I can also tell that the center of it is at the point 3, 0. From the origin, you go across 3, and you don't go up and down at all. Then, to get to the vertices, I went up and down 5. And looking at that box they drew, I can also tell that for the slope of the asymptotes, I go across 2. That's how I know that a is 2 and b is 5. And so if you put all of that together, I end up with an equation that looks kind of like this. I've got y squared over 25 minus x minus 3 squared over 4 equals 1. And here's one last example that we're going to take a look at here on this one. So we have this hyperbola, and what we're supposed to do is to figure out the equation. And you can see that we've got a center that's labeled at negative 2, negative 1. They have the vertices labeled at negative 9, negative 1, and 5, negative 1. And you can tell it opens across. You can also look and see that we have the asymptotes going up to about 4 and down to negative 6. And so again, look through that, see if you can figure out what would end up being the equation for this hyperbola. Well, this time, since it goes across, I know x has got to come first. And you can see up at the top that we have the overall equation x plus 2 squared over 49 minus y plus 1 squared over 25 equals 1. A couple of things to remember again. In the parentheses, it's always the opposites of the points that are at the center. And the x number always goes by x. The y number always goes by y. How far you go across goes under the x's squared 
and how far you go up and down is under the y squared. For hyperbolas, it's always minus in the middle. And that really is the end of the last video. You've got just a handful of problems that you can practice with. And again, your quiz is going to have some questions about hyperbolas and a couple of others that just go back. They talk about the applications of conic sections. And you do want to remember things like an ellipse is always the sum of the distances is the same. In a circle, there's just the one distance that's always the same all the way around. So that does wrap everything up for the year. It certainly has been a very strange spring semester, but hopefully it hasn't been too painful for most of you. I hope all of you have a really good summer, and we will hopefully see everybody back in a much more normal situation in the fall. Take care, everybody.